All right, before we get stuck into this question, there's a bit of theory work that we need to do, first of all. So let's go back and think about, we came up with the formula for the orbital velocity of a satellite. It's big G, big M on R, the square root of all of that. And if you remember, um, the mass of the satellite is kind of irrelevant out of that, so we've got the mass of the planet, big G, and the radius from the centre. Well, if you think about that V, remember it was more of a speed than a velocity because it's constantly changing direction. So speed is simply the distance. Speed is just distance over time taken from the journey. Well, if you think about uh, this one here, it's going in a circle, okay, in a circular orbit. So therefore, the distance is going to be 2 pi r, which is the circumference, which is the radius for the circumference of the circle, divided by big T, and big T is simply the time for one complete cycle of our orbit. So if we were to substitute that in there, we've got 2 pi r over big T equals the square root of big G, big M over R. Uh, now let's just do a little bit of work with that. Let's square everything, uh, make this look a little bit less messy and see where this goes here. So let's square both sides. That gives me 4 pi squared R squared over T squared equals uh, big G, big M over R. Want to get rid of this R over in the de denominator over here, so let's multiply both sides by R. And that gives me 4 pi squared r cubed now over t squared equals big G big M. And let's just pull the 4 pi squared over the other side. r cubed on t squared equals big G big M on 4 pi squared. Now, why do we want to know about this and why is this so exciting? Well, this is exciting because all of this has come out of Newton's understanding of universal gravitation and how it explains circular motion. And out the bottom pops something that looks very much like Kepler's laws. Kepler had worked out from very careful observation and experiment um, that r cubed over t squared, the radius cubed of a satellite divided by the square of its period around any central body is a constant. So for all of the, all of the planets around the sun or all of the satellites around a planet, the r cubed on t squared, that ratio is always a constant. And here we go, we see in Newton that that is in fact a constant. Big G is a constant. Bm, the mass of the central body, is constant for a certain thing like the sun, uh, and, and pi, pi, 4 pi squared is a constant. So what's really exciting out of, out of uh, Newton's work, we, we find that Kepler's laws arrive. So let's, we can do this question now that we've got our law to work from. So let's start with the summary step. It's pretty simple. The radius is 7 times 10 to the 6 metres. The mass of the Earth is 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Uh, and I'm trying to find out what the period of my satellite is, and here is the law that I'm going to be going to use here. Okay, so I'm just going to invert that to start with, just because it makes it easier. T squared on R cubed is 4 pi squared on big G, big M. I'm going to multiply both sides by R cubed, give myself T squared is 4 pi squared R cubed on big G, big M. Therefore, my period is going to be plus or minus the square root of 4 pi squared r cubed on big G, big M. And if I uh, grind that through the calculator, I should be able to work out what the period uh, for our thing is. Okay, so we want to work out the period, which is the square root. Let's work out the numerator. 4 times pi squared times, now radius is 10, 7 by 10 to the power of 6 uh, cubed. There's a numerator. Divided by uh, 6.67, 10 to the minus 11 times 6 by 10 to the 24 kilograms. There's my numerator. Finish off my cube root. Bang! There we go. So my period, and of course this is going to be in seconds, is uh, sorry 5817. We'll call it uh, five. 5817 seconds, and to get that into hours, we can uh, minutes we can divide it by 60, and hours we can divide it by 60 again, which is probably a more reasonable kind of thing. So we might we might do that actually. 5817 um, divided by 60, so it's going to be around about 96 minutes, 97 minutes. So it's approximately equal to 90, 97 minutes. Okay, so our satellite's not very high. That's actually, technically speaking, a low Earth orbit satellite uh, with an orbital period of around about 90 minutes.